Epic, the king of kings in the beginning of our physical reality, God created the universes, realms and dimensions with a single thought. A single spark of inspiration gave way to hundreds of billions of galaxies filled with millions of trillions of stars. Revolving around each functioning star was a system of planetary bodies. Some planets were left void while others were graced with the breath of God himself. One of the governing factions of God in the physical plane was called life and death. In the plane of the physical realm, life was simply the essence of God in the physical realm and death. A transition into the spirit realm and gateway to new life. Another faction was called good and evil. Good was the ways of God according to his laws and standards. Evil was the opposing force. The concept and influence of evil is the product or byproduct of the darkness. The physical realm is one of darkness where the major source of light is provided through celestial lamps or stars. The four opposing factions all serve the same purpose. The balance of order and chaos. This order balanced billions of races and species of life forms throughout the cosmos. Each civilization with their own purpose and destiny, each with their own story. This particular story takes place inside of a small system floating in the spiral arm of a single galactic body. This tiny system of planets rotate around a single star. This is where the lower Earth realm resides. The moonless planet was a beautiful shade of tan, blue and white and was positioned third from its system sun called Sol. During its creation, God called for the beauty of the land to spring up out of the mighty waters. Green grass covered a part of the earth. Green trees covered another part. Mountains and valleys covered another part. God hovered over the waters and breathed into the depths of the sea and from the waters came the life of the planet. Beasts of the land and fowl of the air. God created them all. God then created humankind in his image and likeness. These were the first man and were the ultimate physical being. Dominion over the earth was given to them. They were created knowing of life and death and also of good and evil. He desired worship from a free and pure heart. A willing worship unlike all of the other creatures that had been created. The purpose of this world was to bring glory and honor to its creator. Its very existence along with countless other worlds across the galaxy and in the other hundred billion galaxies are all beacons of glory for the creator. The original earth realm was created when the kingdom of God in heaven was still whole long before the great war. The angels had the liberties to enter the physical worlds as messengers or as protectors. After Lucifer and his armies were cast out of heaven, they were scattered throughout the cosmos but it was the lower earth realm they chose as their main base of operations. A once peaceful realm was now chaotic and overrun with the menacing Black Third. Satan and his army have corrupted the fabric of this world turning man against man and beast against beast. The demons would lay with the daughters of man as well as beast and produced monsters and nightmare creatures of all shapes and sizes. Abominations upon the earth were these beings in the sight of God. A motion of balance was in order. God was preparing the first great shift and cleansing of his world since its creation. There was life in the physical realm before the great exodus in heaven but life afterwards blossomed like never before. The collective praise and worship across the countless worlds also known as the universal church was supposed to equal the output that Lucifer produced himself while he covered the throne. With no one on to cover the throne it is up to the life forces of many to fill that void. Lucifer and his armies will stop at nothing to see that this is not so. For he believes if the worship is generated to him then eventually he will have the power to overthrow the Father. There is only one true God in the form of the Trinity Godhead. Anytime worship is deferred from God it is to Lucifer because he represents all other gods. In the coming ages it is religion that will become Lucifer's greatest weapon. The largest landmass on the planet is called the Kingdom of Nutbush. To some it was known as Pangaea. This land was massive and covered two-thirds of the world. The other third is Waters of Saul. The mighty King Alnum rules the land of Nutbush. Alnum is the only begotten son of Queen Ariana II. She was responsible for unifying the once primitive tribes of Nutbush into one united kingdom with a weapon that was said to have been created in the realm of the angels. This weapon was given to her by the Archangel Michael to protect the world from the Dark Ones. Legend tells that this weapon turned the tide in the Great Angelic War many many years ago. She named the sword after her mother Queen Ariana I thus the sword of Ariana was born. Worthy of the sword bearing his grandmother's name Alnum struck down most of the so-called unstoppable dragon army. The dragon army is a product of the Black Third. Demon seed creatures that covered the earth and caused chaos and havoc to the sons of men. The sword now rests in the king's chambers. King Alnum was the king of all kings. His rule was wherever he laid his foot down. He was a just ruler following the rules and paths of the ancient ones. A man of prayer and devotion and of great wisdom was he. From tireless training and countless battles, he was an incredible physical specimen. His dark skin shined in the sun's light and glowed in the moonlight. 
On his head are seven black locks of hair. On top of his locks rested the awesome crown of Nutbush. His hair was as strong as iron. The massive hands he possessed were strong from years of sword fighting and climbing. A warrior at walking age. He was fearless in battle and was trained in combat by his mother the queen. His deep voice, broad shoulders and muscled arms were fitting for the king of kings. He was respected, loathed and feared by human, beast, and demon kind altogether which in itself is unheard of. The royal palace of Nutbush was the most beautiful of the entire known world. Builders from the four corners helped to build the palace, which was positioned at the center of the capital city of Nutbush. No slaves were used in the building of his palace. Slavery was a practice that was outlawed by Queen Ariana II kingdom wide. The builders willingly offered their services to their king with great joy. The towers rose high into the air and the gates were made from solid silver that shined so bright in the sun. Atop the towers sat the royal flags of Nutbush in purple and gold. The royal city was a sight to behold indeed. The walls surrounding the capital city were a hundred feet high and easily discouraged any attempts to attack from humans or demons. For the walls were blessed by angels. With Lucifer's armies polluting the rest of the earth it was only a matter of time until conflict arose. Reports of attacks on neighboring tribes were increasing every day. Alnum knew something had to be finally done about it. War is coming that would change the course of all reality. This is that story.